let's talk about the fun and lively polka. This piece is often used in competitions um, on a low level as an easy piece, but I don't think it is easy at all. It presents a number of technical and interpretive difficulties. Let's start with the right hand. The first thing we notice is the use of staccato everywhere. It is quite obvious that Tchaikovsky is very concerned with teaching young performers how to play a proper staccato because so many of the pieces in the children's album are pedagogically directed at specifically solving this technical issue. So how do we play a good staccato? Most children approach staccato something like this. And yeah, that's not really a staccato though, is it? Slapping the keys is not the same thing as playing staccato. My favorite way of teaching the kind of short finger staccato that is required here is to ask the student to start on the surface of the key and think about simply scratching the surface. it is to pretend that there's some dust or perhaps even a bug on the key that needs to be flicked off. That gets the little finger moving. The staccato in the left hand may be an even bigger challenge because this time the staccato notes are often doubled or tripled. So chord staccato is a technique that Tchaikovsky uh, seems to be very interested in teaching through the children's album that is used in many of the pieces. So here you have to be very careful indeed about starting at the surface of the key and moving all the fingers together. I don't think this will work well if you start anywhere in the air. to get the notes that are not simultaneous. Simultaneous notes are excellent, but I think there's more to this left hand than that. I think there's a secondary melodic line here as well. So where is it though? Is it the bass notes? Maybe. Is it in the bottoms of the chords? Is it at the tops of the chords? Less interesting in my opinion, but maybe you like it. The next challenge here is interpretive. In a short piece like this, which in my edition is only a page, the same material repeats as many as four or even more times. I think this is Tchaikovsky's challenge to get us to use our imagination. So, the first question to ask is, how long is a phrase? Let's say you decide that the phrase is four measures long. Okay, so that way the dynamics become clear. Two measures crescendo, two measures diminuendo. Oh, that's lovely. But what if your tempo is a little faster? And what if you want the phrase to be eight measures long? So this way, the first four measures will be crescendo, maybe with a slight taper at the end, and the following four measures will be a diminuendo, with a bigger taper. That's also really cool. Or you can decide that maybe that different ending should actually be a crescendo. Or maybe it's only crescendo the second time as opposed to the first time. So many options. So listen to my interpretation of the piece at the end of this segment and see if you understand my artistic choices and see if you agree with any. I hope I've answered a lot of your questions. If you have more, please leave them in the comments. Happy practicing!